feeling of that you're not moving on the bus can be very challenging. LA traffic is LA traffic. And if you're hopping on a bus, you're hoping to kind of avoid some of the stress of traffic, but just the bus is still stuck in traffic. One of the most important things we can do to improve transit in Los Angeles is to make it uh, more fast and more convenient and more reliable. And key to that are bus only lanes. We had a phenomenal opportunity to really pilot that and showcase it in Los Angeles when we had to shut down some of our train service for some repairs. We had this major rail closure that was happening. Uh, we, we thought about the 50,000 daily riders that were going to be impacted as they approached downtown. Typically, as far as an implementation goes, we would need to do uh, a number of studies to make sure what are the impacts to the specific corridor and adjacent corridors. We were able to get this transit lane in relatively quickly at a cost of about $200,000 to implement. And we were able to do that over one weekend. In LA, pilot projects are everything. You gotta be able to show people that things work in Los Angeles for people to think that, okay, it can work in Los Angeles. We're not stuck in traffic. We're actually passing by a lot of vehicles that only have one passenger in it. And a bus full, like fully loaded of people uh, can go way faster now that we're not stuck with all those private vehicles. Our surveys are showing that a third of our passengers are saying that they're saving up to five minutes and another third of our passengers are saying they're saving over five minutes on this 1.8 mile segment of Flower Street bus lane. So at its peak, we were moving 70 buses an hour through this bus lane. That's 2,000 passengers an hour. That's twice as much of the capacity that was being carried on the other two uh, automobile vehicle lanes. And that's a, a huge accomplishment. If you make a service reliable and fast, people will use it. Not only will people use it, they will prefer it. And I think that's a lesson that, that other elected officials and agency heads at LA DOT and LA Metro need to take to heart. I think the Flower Street bus lane should be permanent, largely because I think it's an example of how effective a bus lane can be here in Los Angeles. I definitely think it should be permanent. Um, I think that we should be exploring uh, more of those kinds of bus only lanes across the city, like Vermont, like Western, um, that are already see a huge number of riders ride their, bus, their rapid buses. So maybe some of those streets should be considered for a bus only lane as well. sprawling city and so a, a wide web network of bus lanes is the main way you're going to be able to really serve everybody. So here in Los Angeles we're trying to lay the groundwork and set the framework for how to move forward on more bus only lanes. We're trying to pull together LA DOT and LA Metro, the two agencies that need to work together to make this happen, into a formal working relationship to study our, our high capacity corridors, our high transit corridors to see where and how we can get this done. We are working directly with Metro. Um, on efforts to essentially screen our street network for candidate location opportunities. So just like the Orange Line, Wilshire Boulevard, those existing bus facilities that we have, um, we want to identify where those types of facilities make sense in other parts of the city. Everybody is now seeing that the bus is a viable option. Again, that only happens if we have dedicated bus lanes. We need to have dedicated bus lanes throughout the city.